Hello dear chess fans, my name is Castoni, I am a professional chess coach. Today I will share a free lesson with all of you guys. So the topic is exchanges. I usually like to teach things that you can implement in your practice right away. And you face the challenge of which pieces you have to exchange, which you don't want to exchange during every game. So it's really important to master this aspect of chess. So I will give you three exercises and before explaining you every position and giving you tips, I would like you to pause the video and think what would you play if you were a certain player. In this case, it's Black's turn. So regardless, if I give you guys tactical or positional exercises, think you are the one playing this over the board in real standard control game and calculate the lines and get the decision. What would you play? So. Go ahead, post the video and think, what would you play here as black? Okay, so in this game you can see black is up a pawn. And it would be really easy for black to re realize his advantage if white would lack the counterplay. So what's white's counterplay? Well, we can look at even concrete lines, which would help us realize why white is still holding to the thief uh, with the thief and hoping for drawing chances. So if we take the knight, we exchange the piece, then let's say rook takes e3, knight c6, and we have fireworks right away. And this bishop h takes h6 is really annoying to me. So if we take, then it's just rook g3, and as you can see, this is going to end up in the checkmate very soon. Let's say play queen d2. Let's say king h7, then rook h3. The pawn on h6 is unholdable. So in this case, it seems like knight e3 doesn't work. What what are the alternatives? Well, let's say we play knight d4 because obviously the knight wants to take on the five and rupture our pawn structure, where white will have a compensation for the pawn. Well, in this case, there is a tactic knight takes d5. And later on, white's bishop is going to pin the knight and the, he's going to regain the piece and the material is going to be equal. Well, what about queen a6? Maybe without the queens, it, it would be a better type of endgame for black. Well, yes, but white is not going to exchange the queens. He plays queen d2, let's see knight e3, rook e3. And there are still attacking chances as rook is going to come to, let's say, g3 or uh, <clears throat> there are same bishop h6 ideas in there as well. But as you already probably feel, white's counterplay is along the attacking chances. So we have to identify that if queens are off the board, then it's going to be easier to win. I use this example as when you're up in the material, you have to realize that exchanges help. Well, think of this. Is it easier to win a war or a battle 5,005 against 1,000 or 5 against 1. Well, it's obviously 5 against 1. So exchange all the pieces, preferably, after, of course, first of all, the queens. And then in the end game, it's going to be a lot easier to promote your pawn. So queen d4. And now white really has no good alternatives to taking. So queen takes d4, knight d4. And now what black is going to do is simply play, let's say, rook ac1, knight bc6. And a healthy extra pawn, black has a clear advantage, white has no counterplay. We're going to play rook c8, preferably even exchange all the rooks, because all the minor piece endgames are more or less winning. Even the rook endgames are dangerous for white. And black has no problems. Let's look at another example. So here black is up a pawn again. But there is a forcing line where we can exchange the queens, most probably, or let's say give a checkmate. And if you really do not look at the most forcing lines, then you won't be able to easily win this winning queen and pawn endgame. So we can pause again and try to solve. So you can always play ideas like h4. And obviously, let's say you want to play h3, have some mating ideas, and so on. But 
As you know, Queen Anne games are tricky, especially for amateurs because of the perpetual checks. Pawn up is enough to win, but the most advanced passer pawn is what really matters besides the king safety. So White's counterplay is giving a ch uh, perpetual check or creating a passer of his own, which is not possible here. But Queen A a1 is very forcing as we give a check and threaten to take the pawn. King g2 the only move. Takes, takes. Queen takes c4, take, takes on a5, queen d5 exchanging queens. So I always tell my students look for the forcing lines, forcing moves in every of your calculation, checks, captures and threats. The threats are probably the hardest to see. But with the help of this forcing calculation we can exchange the queens and then you get to an easily winning endgame with the king and pawn as you know all up pawn means complete winning position the third example black to play so think again what would you play here okay so what I can say about this position is that, first of all, I see the pawn structure. White is unable to create the passer because it's four against three, but the pawns are doubled. So if I don't touch the pawns as black, he's not going to be able to make a passed pawn. Whereas my pawn majority on the king side will move on. With the queens on the board, it's hard to see that, of course, but he has a bishop pair. So let's say I take on d1, takes on d1, I play rook d8, let's say takes on d8, queen d8. He still has a weakness on c3, but his pieces is enough to play. Now, if we exchange the queens, the bishops are going to be really annoying and attack all these pawns. His counterplay is going to be enough to compensate for the lack of passed pawn, let's say, uh, on the queen side. So, we have to identify what's white's merit here, what, what's white's asset here, and it's two bishops. And if we play bishop h6, there is no alternative to exchanging the bishops. He is going to have to say goodbye to the bishop pair. And then we're going to do the same thing. We can exchange all the heavy pieces and have good knight versus bad bishop scenario. Or just push the pawn majority on the kick side because we determined that without the bishop or the, these four against three, they do not move. And the light score bishop is not gonna, going to be even able to attack any of these pawns because they're on the dark squares. So he, of course if he plays bishop e5 just f6 catching the bishop. So he takes knight h6 bishop h3. Okay our knight is very passive on h6 here. So why don't we use the technique of improving the pieces. King g7 preparing the route for the knight where knight is gonna get very active we can even maybe play f5 to restrict the bishop and it's kind of going to be a good knight versus bad bishop scenario. So queen e2, queen c7, rook d8. We are exchanging the rooks. Of course white agrees as well or else we are going to double and penetrate to the second rank. And f5. The first step to advancing our pawn majority 4 against 3. So very slowly black is pushing the pawns. Queen d2. Let me show you a couple of more moves. It's simple maneuvering. And now with the long term plan of playing let's say king g7, h7 to h6, g5 and f5, f4, whereas white is unable to make any passed pawn, practically black has very good chances for winning because his pawns are marching. With ta taking care, practically white has no chance of winning the game in general unless black blunders, whereas black is fighting for the win. I hope you guys like this short video lesson if you would like to hire me as your personal chess coach the contacts are on the right or work online otherwise i thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel for more free videos i will upload regularly of course hopefully and give me a like if you liked what you saw thank you and see you next time